This is where the media is as far as also special umbrage with some of the, uh, of course, the other scribes as well, saying they shall be moving to the courts to try and challenge that. And you can see, you Kenyan, with your ball and chain there, uh, of course, uh, you, 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 your uncle is barnacled, so to speak. As far as taxes is concerned, the housing levy will be also ascended to by the president today. And that is the current state of play. This is what Gant has drawn for us inside the standard today. And the anti-corruption bill, a big debate as well. We saw also the civil society before the national dialogue, uh, that is the national delegated legislative assembly in the national assembly. And uh, you can see the current state of play. It's a very contentious bill as far as uh, uh, fighting corruption is concerned, most of them are the civil society decrying the fact that this bill is retrogressive. That is uh, what is inside the star this morning. And also on hiring other jobs applicants. I am Honorable Waziri Mohesh. Forget about your CV experience or job application later. I have hired you as the chief accountant and my personal assistant. Uh, that is what we have inside the people daily this morning and it continues apace this is the altercation between the government and the kenya medical practitioners dentist union kmpdu as you can see we were to call off the strike but uh, their demands have not been met uh, this is all about the cba the collective bargaining agreement that also the government has not honored uh, doling out jobs to some of the interns as well who they say also they deserve to be given employment as far as internship is concerned and they're not interns per se this is just the, the roadway for them also getting their licenses and we just want to begin from there uh, honorable dr mccalley you've yes. been on the ground you've seen the situation as it is right now and uh, today we hope maybe when they will meet with the cs there will be a happy medium and a good argument that will come out of this because Kenyans are suffering. But what have you look? What have you deciphered from this? What have you uh, assessed as far as uh, mm -hmm. this is concerned? Because this collective beginning agreement, it seems they exchange hands from one government to the to other, other. Mm -hmm. uh, until it, it's a rolling issue. So, mm -hmm. do you think today will be the prime solution <laughs> as far as uh, the uh, concerned meeting and settling that? I, I'm not very sure whether it's going to be the last one. Because if you look at uh, what has been happening in the past, all indications are that uh, in, in, as we move to the future, this might not be the last one. Mm -hmm. but, but the way I look at the, the, the whole of this issue of uh, Dr. Strike, the bar, it, it is something which I, don't, I think should not be happening. The other, the other day I was just reflecting on this matter, and I was, I was asking myself, if you look at what it takes to, to get a doctor, a qualified doctor, so that you can move to a hospital and uh, start treating patients, uh, this, this doctor, when they do their exams at, uh, now it's from four, they are the best brains the country has. So they leave secondary schools, they move to the universities as best brains. Any time you, you flash the papers after results, you find that those who manage to be doctors are the best brains in this country. After that, they take the longest time in college, being prepared to be doctors. That is, the training takes the longest time. If you compare with another profession, you realize that they, they, they take the longest time in college. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they go for this thing they, are calling, they call intern, internship which is totally different from the normal internship. It's actually also training. It's like, like you know, working under a qualified doctor so that you get the, 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 the practical aspect of uh, uh, the training. Because you know you're dealing with human life, mm -hmm. which is very delicate, and we don't want to, go, to lose lives. So after all this struggle, training, the basic training, 
And then uh, when they get out of the job market, you realize then, I think in terms of the way we treat our employees, it looks like the government has minimal, minimal concern for, for doctors, from what I see. And uh, that's why you see in time, they keep on uh, coming back to the streets, pushing for their interests through the collective bar bargaining agreements. Mm -hmm. how, how I wish that we started having very well structured uh, discussions with them. You know, doctors are not animals, they're human beings. And when things are explained, I, I always imagine they, they could be able to understand. But you know, this, this, this idea of taking a very, the, the, the government side, more so the Minister of Health and our, our team, will take a very firm position that uh, we are not going to negotiate on anything, you go back to, to, to the hospitals. And the doctors are, doctors are presenting very genuine concerns relating to their allowances, relating to the lack of equipment, relating to their salaries, relating to their colleagues who have been trained, been not employed. To, to me, I think these are genuine concerns. And uh, if you reflect at what we've now taken them through, through training, I think we, we, need to, we need to improve the way we relate with doctors. And unless we do that, this will always continue because the government becomes very difficult to deal with doctors. They think they have all the power to, to, to dictate to them what they need to do, which I don't think is right in matters of labor. Because the thing is, people should be able to sit, discuss, say, these are your demands, but based on the current economic situation or the other factors, we can all reach this level and then push this other level to the next, to the next year. But you know, they start by, we would do anything, then when they go on strike, they come and sit and then negotiate. To me, I think that is the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. Let them engage their union leaders early enough so that the union leaders can be informing their membership that uh, even as we, the, we, we are approaching the government on these matters, we are all Kenyans, we know how the economy is performing. Can we take this and live with this? But you know, there isn't any, any arrangement for give and take. I don't see the government opening those doors for let's negotiate and then give and take. It's a situation of close the doors, let them do what they can do because they can't do anything, and then we see what happens. At the end of the day, the results are just very clear. Kenyans end up dying. With, uh, I'm telling you when you look at what's happening in the hospitals. We've lost so many lives, and basically the reason those who are dying are the same, same Kenyans we told will be improving their lives. Because you and me will go to the hospital, we'll have our insurance, we go to private hospitals, and where, where, where even public hospitals are closed, I can arrange with my doctor, we meet in his private clinic, I'll be treated. But what happens to that common man down there who has no even 100 shillings to go? Me and the Senator Mungatana, we can tell you for sure, people come to offices asking for 50 shillings to go to hospital. Others come even saying, I just want 20 shillings to go and buy painkillers. Imagine somebody come to tell you, I just need 20 shillings to go and buy painkillers. Because they are going to the public hospitals, they find there are no drugs, so they can only buy drugs from the chemists. And then those are the same, same people we want to tell them, doctors will not be giving you services. So you are left on your own, and they have no choice. So it's like we are no longer taking human life seriously. So from where I see it, I, I would suggest we, we open the doors for negotiation, open the doors for people to say give and take, so that we have a country which respects the labor movement and by the same time, labor movement which appreciates our economic situation. I think that we will then be helping this country. So what was the rhyme of reason of having these uh, communities, um, health workers who are rolled out? We, have, uh, we had uh, 100,000 of yes. them. Basically, they are called community health promoters. Community health promoters, yeah. yes. The, the only issue was to, 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 to kind of... Uh, How do they come in handy right now when we have a strike? Are they also alleviating the situation on the ground? No, no, you know, you know the way the structure is? These are people who have been given basic training to assist in actually doing the, the basics in terms of collecting data, ensuring that you take temperatures, you lose small, small things. And then it was a way of a referral so that after they do that, if they realize the, the basics, you have very abnormal basics, like your, your temperature is high or your blood pressure is high, uh, then they, 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 they will refer you now to the dispensary. Then the dispensary can look at you, refer you to the, to the uh, health center. So that we avoid this idea where even people with pain, uh, headache are going to hospitals, maybe because uh, just of a small, which can be treated at that level. So what has happened now, because it's a, it's a referral system, then when the doctors are not working, it collapses at some point. Mm -hmm. And you can't really, so even you, you make the, the, the so-called uh, community health promoters ineffective. 
because they can now make that referral to the, to the other level because people are not working even like you know most most uh, hospitals have been managed by nurses you see because it's it's the doctors who are on strike the nurses are working but but you realize even by uh, the level of training th th there are some situations a nurse cannot handle without a, doc a medical doctor so it means then that where the a medical doctor is required then that treatment is either suspended or you are you are told look for other alternatives either you go to a private doctor and, and that's where the challenge is so the whole system is likely to collapse in time and we have seen in the past it will continue like this and then the, the, the nurses will be sympathetic to the doctors and they will join the strike the nurses the nursing union then with the time the system will be collapsed that's why it's important the minister take this matter seriously sits down with the, minister, with the doctors and they discuss what are the issues and see how they can uh, whatever they, is possible let it be done what is not possible to be done, then let it be explained to the doctor so they know, even though we would wish to do this, we, we have no capacity to implement this. So allow them, they can ask the doctors to allow them more time, but I, I, I agree on what is doable so that they do it. I think that will help this country. Right. Yes. Uh, Mungatana, should we be having and uh, talking about strikes in this epic of time when uh, we have, you know, the current administration really uh, shaking into place and advocating for <coughs> universal health care? You have... Uh, the SHIF also being streamrolled right now, it really, there's a disconnect. When you're talking about SHIF, doctor strike, why can't you just begin with the basics? And this has been, of course, forthcoming because they've been talking about a looming strike over and over, but we can see the government has been slow and they have taken clashing slowness to respond. Now, when it is too late is when you're calling for a meeting right now. <laughs> um... In a way, the government has responded. Uh, it's just that um, I remember very well uh, the CS for Health, uh, CS Nakumicha, some time ago when she was asked uh, by the media, uh, what are you doing about the looming strike? At that time, they had not gone on strike. And her answer was that um, the issues involved are not limited to uh, the Department of Health alone. We have an issue with the Treasury. The question is about money. And so um, we are negotiating to see if we can get a larger allocation so that we can absorb the interns. Because the interns, uh, the medical interns, as Moishmua Makali has said, they are critical and it's part of their training so that they can get employed. And the figures are showing that 27% uh, of the doctors who are serving us in hospitals are actually medical interns because it's their passage right. So they, uh, K K Kenya Medical Practitioner, uh, were, the union was saying that uh, we need these people employed, we need them ab absorbed, we need the allowances paid. So that is, uh, I know that the minister is very aware about this and uh, he made it clear that it is not just an issue of health, it's an issue that involves the, the treasury. So I, uh, things to do with treasury, like I've said before, they really take time. Treasury is not... Uh, it is, it's, it is one of the ministries to deal with is not easy. So, uh, I'm sure the minister has taken too long to try and, and get a solution in terms of the funds, and this has forced the doctors to go on strike. And the strike by the doctors is justifiable, because you see, this is not a new problem. Uh, this issue, actually, uh, is a development from the 2017 Collective Bargaining Agreement that um, was negotiated by the then government and the doctors' union. So it's not a new issue. Uh, and, and again, the challenge is the same. It was the same at that time in terms of funding, and it's the same at this time in terms of funding. What I'm encouraged uh, to see is that the minister has called now a meeting, like you have alluded. And in this meeting, Treasury officials have been asked to attend. Apart from the, the union officials, treasury officials have been asked to attend. The 
uh, officials from the Ministry of Labor have also been asked to attend. Ministry of Labor is critical because they are the ones who deal with uh, negotiations when it comes to collective bargaining agreements. And they are the ones who have the legal mandate and the legal framework on how to settle um, uh, you know, uh, trade union disputes. But I think the critical people are the Treasury representatives. So that even when the minister is chairing and listening, the Treasury people are there to tell us where they're going to get their money. Because at the end of it, it is a question of money. Now, it's not just Kenya where we, we have these kind of problems. Uh, all over the world, uh, for some reason, health doesn't get the kind of budgetary allocation as, as everyone would wish them to have, at least the private health sector. So uh, in Kenya, for example, over 30% of the budget goes to education. So if you are the CS education, you handle a very big portion of the budget for this nation. But then if you are CS for health, you don't have that kind of, uh, of allocation mm. that you'd wish to have. Um, so it, it, is a, it is a question of also of uh, prioritizing in terms of budgeting. Uh, and then if, if health has been funded, if, if uh, education has been funded to the extent of over 30% of the budget, is it possible now to cut it and take that money to health? You see, now you create a crisis because if this area has this kind of funding, to remove that funding and take it to another department creates very huge gaping holes. And now you'll have the teachers going on strike and, and the whole system but hold on. disrupted. Hold, hang on. I think this issue has not uh, been uh, with us just recently. Correct. You have all the time to go have planned as uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government. Because I think even last year, uh, at around this time, in, uh, that was in February, we had a very interesting story, and I think uh, we, in, in one of our forums, I read that, that particular story yes. of a doctor, where they're saying the frustration of Kenya's jobless doctors. Uh, a somber six-sentence paragraph was the final communications that Dr. Fred Muwoki penned before he died. Mm -hmm. It was not a will, but a suicide note addressed to his sister. He was sorry that the pressure of life had knocked him down. He was a rising star that many expected to shine bright, a hard-working young man whose hopes for a better life was dimmed by a society and government that neglected him, and many like him. I'm sorry, sister. I, I have a lot of pressure, debts and loans from my friends. I am sorry to disappoint you. I don't have money in my account, and so don't bother checking. I'm deeply sorry, sister. He signed off before taking his own life. Moki is said to have struggled for months to get a job after graduating from medical school, mm -hmm. but all attempts hit a snag. A dark cloud hung over him. The pressure from society sent him to the pits where he had no strength left uh, to fight. He needed to provide for his loved ones, but with that uh, income, uh, he, needed, he needed to provide for his loved ones, but with that, without income. Right. It's a question mark uh, put there. He needed to leave his dream of restoring uh, people's lives, but who was to give him that chance? He needed to earn his doctor's title, but it remained just a name. His skills underutilized. Mwoki, unfortunately, is just one among an increasing number of Kenyan doctors who are taking the dark route to the abyss after seeing their hopes for saving lives and rewarding career dashed and according to the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Council, about seven medical doctors in the country have died by suicide in the past seven years after they failed to get an opportunity to practice medicine. You can see the toll that is taking on these people. After grueling six years in medical school, doctors usually look forward to saving lives. But those coming out of schools these days wait longer than usual, about 4,000 trained doctors in the country are jobless. Despite both public and private hospitals being overwhelmed by few staff dealing with thousands of patients who turn up for treatment on a daily basis. In whose hands are the patients safe? One will wonder. For those at work are burnt out, compromising the quality of their output, while others stay at home in frustration on the verge of slipping into depression. More than 5,000 doctors have graduated in the past five years registered and licensed to practice by the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council. So of this, about 3,800 
armed medical officers, 272 dentists, and 1,280 pharmacists. And it goes on and on and on. I don't need to belabor the point. So this is not something that is new, that is catching the government unawares. There is recorded history. There is suicide. People have died by suicide because they've not really gotten jobs. I think that should have raised a concern if we had that particular report there uh, by one of the journalists uh, from uh, the nation media. This is Angela Okech and uh, Helen Shikanda. So why, why are we here? So and I how many are frustrated and how no, many uh, do we even have bugbears and fears they might even take this route again? Yes, I think the, um, the point is made. Our government, when we took over this administration, had extreme severe stress on doing, uh, setting the economy in, in the right path, okay? We had to deal with uh, lack of foreign reserves. We had to deal with uh, bad fuel prices. We had to deal with bad food prices. There was a lot of stuff that was on the table. So my take is that um, we've had to deal with the bigger issues that threaten the very existence of this nation, like the debt crisis, you know? We had to pay the debts as a nation so that we can set our way towards the correct direction. So I think this is the right time now for us to now start tackling um, sector, uh, to start to be sector focused on uh, issues that affect the country. You remember that uh, we went into education uh, and uh, we employed about 50,000 teachers. We started there, okay? 50,000 teachers were employed. We went to the TVET, the instructors. M about uh, 10,000 were taken in this year alone, this financial year. But the government of Kenya cannot do everything at the same time. So I appreciate, in fact, what you are saying is a, is a, is a real serious issue. Indeed. And it is the responsibility of the government, and there's no explaining that. The government must take a stand, and they must do something about it. But what I know is that all the competing interests of the Treasury, uh, you know, sorting out the regular salaries, sorting out external obligations, sorting out, uh, you know, uh, pressures that are coming on the state itself. Then, as we've started with education, we are confident that even this one now, the medical uh, sector, is going to be resolved. So my belief is that uh, what the minister will do today, when they have this meeting, they will take all the requests and the treasury people will be there. I believe the next meeting that must follow is the interministerial meeting between the treasury the, uh, and, the, and the relevant ministry, which is the, the medical ministry. And then remember, the health is also a devolved function. So the council of governors must come in. And we, we have to put our heads to see what can we do as a, as a government and as county government. Why? Because you will, you will appreciate there is a strike. But uh, uh, Muthomi Njuki, governor, His Excellency, from Paraka Nithi, does not have a strike. What has he done? He has managed to sort of negotiate with the doctors and with the people there. And uh, Taraka Nithi is our neighbor in Tana River County on the other side, on the northern side. Uh, our governor in Tana River County has, has not taken any initiative. So for us, the whole referral hospital has become another place of suffering. It's become hell on us because the doctors are not there. And the problems uh, are such that, you know, we used to refer our patients to Garissa or to, to Malindi and Mombasa. But then, even then, they are having problems. And the doctors who are supposed to refer are not there to refer. So you go with your patient uh, in Hola from all over Tana River County, and you, you just are told to go back home. And so what we do is to look for alternative uh, medicine. This is the traditional medicine. 
we start looking for the hubs. And the hubs are not as many as they used to be because people have been cutting the forests and doing things that have destroyed traditional ways of dealing with issues. So we're having problems. But I'm saying even governors, they must come out with uh, creative things because we should ask ourselves, why isn't there a strike in Mudhomi Njuki's uh, county in Tarakanithi? He is the chair of the county um, uh, governors, uh, uh, the COG. Uh, for health, the Department of Health, uh, Mudhomi Njuki is the chair. And Mudhomi Njuki has made sure that in his county there's no strike. So what has he done that other governors are not doing, you see? So I'm saying on this table, after these uh, discussions are done, the county governors must say, this is what we are bringing on the table. As, as the minister is saying, this is what I'm bringing on the table. Uh, for health and the minister for treasury should say this is what I'm bringing on the table. This is the way we are going to resolve this matter. My prayer also is that after these meetings are done, uh, the president will also put presidential attention on this matter because at the end of it, I know treasury is stretched, but they must find money to resolve the issues of health because there's no other way. You know, here it is like a, a debt, and the, the only way to resolve a debt is to pay that debt. So uh, I believe the government, at the end of it, will resolve this matter. We will find a way. Yeah, I find it interesting that you, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> let me just clear that flame, that uh, you, 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 you say Treasury is, is stretched. Yeah. But when it comes to priorities, because we have here, uh, where it indicates that President William Ruto and Deputy President Rigadi Kashiko have bust the full year budget in seven months. This is official data uh, amid aust austerity plans aimed at reversing a past trend of borrowing to fund government operations. Correct. And the latest uh, data published by Treasury Cabinet Secretary Jugun uh, Ndungo indicates that Executive Office of the President spent 9.09 .09 billion shillings in the period through January against an original full year estimates of 8.64 <coughs> billion shillings. And that represents an over expenditure of 450 uh, million shillings or 5.21% of the original 12 months budget of the presidency prepared by the previous administration. And if even when that was going to, for publication, uh, that was almost one year, we've seen this increasing significantly from this particular figures that we're given right now. We have the, the budget policy statement recently, where we see the legislatures, you're seeking two billion shillings as, uh, as members of parliament so that uh, the issues of legislation may be facilitated. And I wonder, when it comes to healthcare and issues of legislation, which really should take a priority right now? Because you, on the budget policy statement, you seek two billion shillings. And I guess it, that, that, yeah. You know, you know the ball, you, you are raising very important issues. And uh, as Senator Mugatana is saying, budget might be one of the issues, but I don't think it's the only issue. Like, like you have rightly put it, the, the, the issue of getting our priorities right as a country <clears throat> is a, another major issue. For example, you've seen government's own report through the Public Service Commission saying we have CSEs, and one of the cartoons was confirming that, that we have cabinet ministers who have employed unnecessary personnel to be part of their team. How I wish that an unnecessary addition of personnel, those resources were being channeled to, 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 to the health sector. The, but the other thing which is also important is the issue of uh, the way we have structured our health sector. You know, like Honorable Mugatan is putting it, you have uh, the counties, health is a default function. And in the process of devolving that function, you have the counties who are now recruiting doctors and paying doctors. And then you have also the national hospitals, which have also doctors. So that is structure, and that's why you, you see the doctors have been pushing for their own, they call it a medical service commission, commission yes. or they call it what? Yeah, so so that they, they have a health commission, yeah. which can actually harmonize their terms, which can, from a, a, a common position, also negotiate for their, for their working environment. Because you, you go to some of these hospitals, 
you find you have doctors who have been there, but the support system in terms of required equipment, in terms of uh, other personnel who should work close with them are not there because the companies have not employed them. So you find a doctor who is also underutilized. Other than just being earning a salary, they are also underutilized. And I think we really, as a country, need to look at our whole, our health sector in totality and see where are we getting it right or wrong. Because I believe there are some things we can actually improve without thinking more about the money. That in terms of systems, there are things we can do in terms of structure, institutional setup. There are things we can improve so that we get it right. But all said and done, I think that the, the best thing is that this country, our health sector, is not going the right direction. It's right. actually going but the wrong direction. But Hold on, you've not answered my question regarding yeah. also then, yeah, yeah, or the budget policy statement yeah, itself. The, you, yeah. know, you don't know what would happen tomorrow. How, how critical is it that you get these two billion shillings instead of focusing on the doctors? Which one should come first? No, you know what is happening? It's the same problem of the, the institutional setup. You know what is happening? You give the, the, the county governments some uh, lump sum amount called the, uh, the, 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 the equitable share. Out of the, the, that lump sum amount, each county then will get their share, informed by the formula by, from, from the CRA. Yes, Once you get your share, you are supposed to, 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 to budget. And out of that budget, then you allocate the health sector. Correct. So you see, unlike education or unlike parliament, which gets their share from the national government share, these ones are getting part of it from the national government. I'm, I'm asking about the National Assembly. I'm asking about the, the legislators, not from the counties. Uh, in it's terms of what? Yeah? That's what I'm explaining. I, I, now, when okay. They, okay, let me go at it again yeah, 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 so that, so that yeah, you follow. and the viewers can get it. I don't it. follow. I'm saying when we, we determine the total, like now the total budget is 4.12 trillion. Out of that, we have allocated the counties 391 billion. Now, out of this share of the counties, they, after getting each county getting their share, and the formula for that is given by the Commission of Revenue Authority. Now, for example, Kitui, where I come from, once they get their 12 billion, is now the Kitui County government, together with the assembly, who are supposed to determine how much goes to, to the other sector. At the national level, they give the, the share for policy formulation and strategic direction. Now, what has been happening, that's why well, your, your question becomes very important. What has been happening, there has been that argument that what the, what the governors are saying, through the committee chaired by uh, Governor Muthomi, where they are saying, even when you look at the money being left at the headquarters for policy and strategic direction, is more than even what the counties are allocating in totality for the now frontline services. And that's where the challenge is. So the, the, the issue of the whole budget, we are getting it wrong. But what we're asking is, for example, when Parliament gets about uh, two billion, as you're saying, additional, I think in any budget arrangement, the, the thing you always think about is what justification do you have for, for what you are proposing? But it's like you are saying, when you look at the health sector, and that's what we're saying as a country, we need to change our, our attitude to the health sector. It's like the share we should be allocated to the health sector, and I think by, by international conventions, about 15% or 10%, something like that. We, we are far from that. The other, the other point which is important is that we should be having more money at the county level for the health sector because at the national level it's only policy issues which have been left behind and there's a small budget for the, I think, level six hospitals. Yeah. The rest should be going to the counties, but that is not happening and that's where the argument is. So if we get it right at that point, we'll be able to release more resources to the counties while recruiting doctors and in that case then doctors can be able to get better terms through their collective... Uh, by, by so what I'm the, hearing is all yes. this money also the being disbursed uh, in the counties. Yes. Uh, as far as spending and dedication to the health sector, yes. that is in a very willy-nilly way. It is just uh, yes. within the... It depends on individual uh, governor. The individual governor, how, oh, yes. okay, this, this time we're going to dedicate 3% of yes. that particular share, 2% of that another particular one, share. Zero yeah. Another but one, zero But given how critical it is, because mm. now you have how much that has been actually added on top of the to money, the, 46 to, billion shillings? To the counties. To the counties, yeah. Yeah, with well, the conditional grants. That, that with conditional but equity per share is very little. It's from three, was it three, I think three, from 385 to 391. Yeah. And so the, it's only conditional the, grants. This, this 46 billion shillings, you say it's a conditional grant? Yeah, those are conditional grants. Mm -hmm. The money so, which comes from, what would happen is some donors would give money like the World Bank uh, for specific programs at the county level. But then the, count, the government also gives conditional grants where they say, we are giving you this money specifically for this particular program. 
So you can't, you, as you plan, you, you have no, you don't have the flexibility. The, the wiggle room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so only the 391 where you have the wiggle room. Okay. Mm. But the, the, the thing is, the process of allocating the money for the counties, it starts from the National Assembly after, like the way Moishmoa has explained, after they split the amount that remains in the, in the national government budget and the amount that comes to us. And then we have, as a Senate, to discuss it. Uh, there is uh, the Treasury, what they propose. There's what the CRA has proposed as a formula. And there is what we think should happen with the input of, of governors. So for this one, I think we are going to have uh, a back and forth. Because whatever Parliament has proposed, we, the Senate, believe that we should get a higher share. But that is on the global figure. What Moishimua is raising is that Assuming that we even give counties 420 billion, as uh, you know the, the wish list is, eh? assuming that is what we, we secure, still, because health is a devolved function, it will go to the governor. It will break down to the individual governors. You know, how much is it that you are allocating to health? What is your priority? So you, you will find some counties where the, there's very good allocation and their health facilities are excellent. They have employed very serious specialists. Uh, people don't even want to come to Nairobi or Mombasa or whatever. They, 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 are, they have very nice level four hospitals, okay? So that is a question that we need to ask. Why can't we standardize? And in fact, there, there's another deeper question that if I'm working in, say, uh, County X, I receive this kind of salary. Mm -hmm. I move to county Y, and my salary is higher, is higher. than county X, mm -hmm. you know? Then you have a, the, disparity, a, a, yeah. the disparities there. So mm -hmm. we have a serious structural issue. The, the new laws, the new health laws, have tried to create a situation where county governments now cannot take the money from a health institution. Let's say it's a dispensary, and they are charging some money. That money is supposed to remain within that dispensary for improvement. Previously, what governors would do, all this money goes to the county revenue fund. And when it goes there, it starts paying allowances for travel, for officials, you know, uh, things that have nothing to do with health. So the new health laws that we have brought now are going, it is a step in the right direction because it's going to be standard now that if it is a health center or a dispensary or a hospital, whatever monies you raise, there are, there are local people who have been appointed at the, at, to board as a board for that health facility. And that money, when it comes, it's supposed to be allocated for the improvement of that facility. So that is like stage one of financial management improvement. But still, the rest of how the money is allocated in terms of percentages and what it is left to the discretion of individual governors. Even the salaries of top professionals in medical uh, uh, services uh, delivery, it is left to the individual county governors. So how does it play with the referral hospitals, which is being run by the national government? So the, the ones for... What is the structure? No, the ones for the national government has more or less remained what it used to be. But even them, you remember, they have been saying whatever they are getting is not enough. So they also have their own battles for more money, for better standards of health, and for better... You, standards means we want more equipment, uh, we want more workers. So even the ones, the institutions that are being run by the national government, they have their own struggle. But me as Senator, I want to talk about the primary health care givers. There, we have a problem because there is no standardization of services across the counties. All There's right. none at all. But I so find, there are structural I issues don't you think it's that need to be dealt with so that we can resolve this issue once and for all. But isn't it, isn't, isn't it within your remit as senators to tease this out? 
And what have you been doing regarding it? Because this is not new to you. you you're aware of it. Yes. You're supposed to be custodians of, you know, yes. the, the county governments. Mm. So when I hear you coming and say, oh, there is no structure, what are you doing yes, to make but, sure that... But we have, yeah, we, I've what, told you, we have passed the laws now to standardize collection of money at health units now, nationally, will not go to the county revenue fund. It will be managed at the point of health unit. Now, this law has not started working, but it is one of the laws that has been signed. So by the end of it's the... Been assented to. It has been assented to. So maybe in another How three, four... This? These are the four laws that are okay. part of the universal health care plan uh, of our government. So in another maybe six months, when money is now collected from the So this is facility. dependent on the shift as you, as you speak? No, no, or no, is no. different? It's, it, is, difference? it is a different one. Because okay. this one, it's the money we are collecting here. Let's say you are collecting, um, you know, uh, 150,000 in this health facility per month. Uh, what used to happen previously is that you take that money to the county revenue fund. Yes. Okay. So even if you have the, the door or the gate to the health center has been broken, you don't have money to fix that gate. That money goes to the county revenue. You have to now start making requests to the, you know, the normal process mm -hmm. so that you can get uh, 10,000 to fix the gate. As impressed. You know, but now you don't have that. We, once this, uh, this institutional change has taken place, it will mean that money remains there. So as Senate, we have started there. But what we need to do going forward is to standardize the entire health structure across the counties. Because health is a devolved function. And we need to actually standardize so that a professional working in Nyandarua should get the same advantages like the professional working in Tana River County. So far, that has not happened. And you see, when we engage with health workers like KPDMU, eh, mm -hmm. what they tell you is that uh, the only solution to this problem is that we create within the constitution the health commission so that we are like the teacher service commission mm -hmm. with, its own chap with its own chapter within the constitution. We can employ we can do what we, it is run across the counties, like the way it used to be now. When the health workers are saying they want a union, the, the one inches they seem to have a different, uh, they, they want a, a health commission, one inches also have a different opinion. Because the, the other problem that used to be before health was devolved was that you find a doctor in my village, for example, he's being managed from Nairobi. So he will come, report, then go and sleep in another place. Nobody is able to follow him or to know what he's doing. You know, all these remote areas, you know, someone is he's supposed to be employed there, he's collecting a salary there, but he runs a clinic, say, in Malindi, and he has no time to, he comes there maybe once in a while. You see, and that problem has drastically reduced with that devol the, the devolution of health services to the counties. Because now we have a minister uh, for health, uh, county uh, uh, executives in charge of health, and they are monitoring. We have a PS, they are monitoring. They know, they get reports, okay? So now medical workers, at least, it's not like it used to be before. But that said, there's still a problem because um, we have a huge challenge in the medical sector. It is not uniform, it is not well funded, and uh, sometimes you are sold to the idea that we should have a health commission because that one will standardize everything at the same time. But how do you get even something like that inserted in the constitution? It's a whole long process that will never happen today. So as, that, as they are making that demand, it's okay, as they are making that demand, we still need to look at institutional frameworks that will standardize health service delivery across the countries. And we've started with the universal health uh, laws that we passed. My prayer is that uh, with now the, the, the health units standing on their own, uh, we hope the governors will 
improve the leave those facilities to improve themselves and also add in terms of how much they will allocate for health services because that is where the challenge is yeah. all right so we hope that today, uh, mm. because Azimio has been calling for the resignation of the CS. The CS. Uh, is, is that just um, populism? Uh, is it an overreach as, as far as you know, the health sector is concerned? Why would you call for a resignation? No, I think what we are saying, we, we all agree it's a country that uh, the health sector is facing quite a number of challenges. And uh, these challenges we like it or we don't like, we must sort them out. And the person who has been placed at the top to ensure that they are sorted out is the CS, Minister of Health. So, in a situation where then these challenges persist, it might be a, a clear demonstration of the capacity of that office in terms of sorting out the office. And then that's why we are demanding, if, that is then, if they are not able to solve the, 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 the issues, just as it happens in every other country, if you have been given a docket and you are not able to manage the issues of that docket, the best thing is always say that you pay away for somebody else, or then you, you are transferred to another one, so that uh, you might get a, a different hand which might sort out the issues. And basically, I think that's what we are saying, as a Simeo, that we have been observant, we've been w watching what, what is happening. We're, we are happy with some of the laws which have been passed by Parliament and the Senate in terms of improving the sector. And we wish with those laws then we should see more of a st streamlined health sector. But that doesn't seem to be happening. It's taking longer than we expected. So with that, I think that's why Azmi is saying then, it might be time for this particular minister to pay for it, so that we see whether we get somebody else who can manage, manage the issues. Right. So for the me, message. I don't support resignation of the CS, because um, if, if the problem is the incompetence of that particular CS, it's not dealing with matters, it's not uh, making things happen, that's a different matter. Then we can all be together. We can have a bipartisan approach to the removal of that CS. But if the problem is an institutional issue, if the problem is a treasury issue, if the problem is a CBA of 2017 inherited, what, what steps has she taken? She has pushed together with the president for the passing of the universal health care laws. These laws have not started working to see the full impact of it. She has been there and she has, as I've said before, talking about what needs to be done, which is basically a treasury issues. And she has now called for the meeting. So I think we give her a chance so I'm saying, but is to it, resolve is, is, it, is it a matter of strategic communication failure that is coming from the CS herself? This, if you say there are all these laws that have been passed, and uh, it calls for patients, for them to be shaken into place so that we may see the exceedingly beneficial e effects of them at the end of the day. And she's not really done that because the calls have been there for the longest and there has been no response whatsoever from the no, ministry. No, it's not where, 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 where does the back really stop when you say, oh, you know, it is very layered. There's so many, uh, you know, wheels that are actually moving in this particular the cog, uh, of, yeah. So the problem, I, I wanted, with, yes. the problem with uh, our media, let me just say, unfortunately, political news is what gets the, the cake, you see? Political news gets the cake. But I know that, and I have seen the, 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 the PS, whenever the CS and the PS for health, like this uh, distribution of these uh, kits for the health promoters, at local levels. She has been repeating again and again the same message that we have started on the right path towards resolving some of the issues that are within this department. But even with the health, she has, she has health been, promoters work, she has been. there was question on where actually the kitty of paying this particular promoters will come from. Is it the national government or the county government? Yes. This there is, there the, has been that disparity see, and we've seen the Council I, of Governors coming to the phone and questioning why are we rolling out 100,000 promoters, health promoters on the ground, and we have no budget for them whatsoever? Why, what, what is the tearing rush? So what, what uh, the health minister has responded is that the national government is giving the health kits, okay? The ones, the basic one for testing diabetes, doing what, 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 okay? The, the basic health kit is being given by the national government to the health promoters. The health promoters are being hired by the county government. 
But in terms of their stipend, you know, previously they were just volunteers, you know. In terms of their stipend, the national government is giving uh, 50%, and the county government is supposed to give 50%. So maybe there are issues. Maybe county governors can raise their issues, but I know the stipend for the national government has been going down. And those people have been working, because I have seen them work. They are uh, divided into cohorts. So they're not even getting the stipend? No, they are. I'm telling you, like, the what one do you mean for... it's been going down? No. They have been working, I'm saying, mm -hmm. and that I have seen them working, because they are, they are in cohorts of 30, and they, they move to tell people about... It's more like preventive health care for them promoters are not they are not doctors but yeah. it's preventive health care and the 50 percent from the national government they have started getting it as from the county governments i know many county governments have not started paying but it's a new thing so we hope over time they will be able to arrange their budgets adjust their budgets and give these health promoters what they deserve so on the whole i i want to say that uh, we give the minister a chance because i think she's been on top of it i i have seen her moving across the country especially in the western region where she comes from and i have seen her do a lot of this uh groundwork uh, you know being in touch with these people launching what and what so will you call that a distinguished service uh for me i think she has done uh, so far she has done a good job uh, but she has not resolved the issues that are there on the table. So right. we hope with this, uh, the issues that have been brought by the, the union of the medical practitioners, I hope that uh, Treasury will listen, that, that the department uh, concerned with medical care will now be given the priority it deserves because it deserves more priority in terms of allocation. Uh, governors will uh, up their game Thank you. and Kenyans will get better service. Mm. Honorable Makani, before yes. we take a short break, why, why then will the president not really award uh, uh, CS Susan Nakumisha for her distinguished service? We can see Alice Wahome has been awarded. We've seen also uh, Aisha Juma. She's been awarded uh, with the Order of Golden Heart Award for their distinguished services. Mm. Uh, we've seen also of, of who else? Uh, Florence Bore as well, and uh, Jugun Ndungu. Why will we not award her if what we're hearing from Olmo Mugatana, she's Henry, done a sterling job? Let's, let's, uh, or what does it really take for you to be <laughs> getting this order? That, that's what I don't know. Heart? Because uh, Dibal, if you remember, it was it last month with this uh, opinion polling where uh, it was a, a perception right. survey where Ndungu was read among the last four from below. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so, and even I think Aisha Juma was also at the bottom there. So I don't know what the president was looking for, but I do agree with the Senator Mugatan that the, the CS has tried her best, but I think she's facing a number of challenges. So even if I was one who was uh, giving this, this, uh, these awards for distinguished service, I don't think she would be in the group. She's trying her best, but there's room for improvement. But, but even that, the four have been awarded from where I sit. I would be addressing the criteria used to award them. I, I don't know whether, could it be, because I don't think it was an objective thing. I think it was subjective. Maybe somebody is your friend, or he has done something good, and you give. Because uh, Kenyans say they were the poorest in terms of performance. Yeah. So, so maybe are, 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 are we awarding the opposite? Mugadana belongs yeah. to that government. Where, maybe. Yeah, what metrics <laughs> do you can tell what, us? Let, let me. Are we awarding the opposite? Yeah, maybe Mugadana yeah. can tell so us. There is a poll, they are trailing from behind. <laughs> from behind, yeah. 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 But here they are given yeah. the order of the golden hearts. My golden was hearts. my teacher, was being yeah. said, very poor. The eh? presidential award. Yeah. Okay, there is a factor committee. Can we take yeah. a short break? I think they'll reach you on that. We'll take a short break. When we start, there's a committee. They can't even wait for the Heroes Day. Yeah? Okay. We'll take a short break.